Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of The Deep Dive. In this show we are going to talk about a certain subject in scuba diving and because it's a bit chilly out, our first episode is going to tackle heated undersuits and talk a little bit about how they affect decompression. So we all know that dry suits and undersuits are super effective at keeping your body warm when you're diving in colder waters. But if you want to venture into even colder waters or if you yourself feel the cold no matter what, then what can you do about it? Well, the next big thing in undersuits and dry suit diving is heated undersuits. These undersuits are battery powered undersuits that have heated coils built into them that keep you nice and warm on a cold dive. Think of it like an electric blanket that you wear under your dry suit. Now if the thought of diving with an electric battery in your dry suit is making you sweat nervously, don't turn off this video just yet. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of a heated undersuit. Okay, so the first pro is all about the multifunction of a heated undersuit. Most are just the same as a normal undersuit, just with heated coils. So even if you don't have the coils switched on, you will still have a normal undersuit to stay warm. So it ticks both boxes. You keep warm, and if you start feeling a bit too cold, at a flip of a switch, the coils will kick in and warm you up. As you know, undersuits also work out of the water to keep you warm. So if you're feeling a bit cold at home, pop on the undersuit and it will warm you up. The same rules apply to heated undersuits as well if your heating packs in. So, what's one of the worst things to happen when cold water diving? It's getting cold hands. Having cold hands leads to loss of dexterity and this sometimes means the simplest of tasks can be hard to do. Well, with heated undersuits you can also get heated gloves which plug into the same battery. So yeah, you don't lose the feeling in your hands, which means you can in fact clip off that bolt snap without numb fingers holding you back. To tie in with this, using a heated undersuit, of course, helps with blood flow and helps protect your core body temperature. This will also help pre prevent any decompression complications of restricted blood flow anywhere. By keeping your body warm with a heated undersuit, your body increases your blood flow, especially to your extremities, so you decompress more evenly. However, this does come with a couple of large caveats. You also need to make sure you don't overheat because this could increase the rate of decompression to a seriously dangerous rate. But we'll talk more about that a bit later in our decompression video. On a lighter note, using a heated undersuit means you won't get the I need a wee feeling, which most people get on a dive every five seconds because your skin temperature is nice and warm. Cold water diving can really affect your breathing rate and going from a warm to the cold environment in a matter of seconds, like jumping into cold water, can of course cause shock. Having a heated undersuit can eliminate this problem. Another problem that a heated undersuit helps with is after the dive, when you get out of the chilly water, the, thir the first thing you want to do is warm yourself up. This of course speeds up decompression. But if you already feel nice and warm coming out of the water, this reduces the need to go hug a radiator when you get out of the water. <laughs> okay, so that's the pros. Let's take a look at the cons. The first con is that buying these will hurt your wallet. Heated undersuits at the time of recording are significantly higher price than a standard undersuit. And then you probably need to buy a battery too. So yeah, it's gonna cost you. Talking about batteries, in order to run power to the coil system, you of course need a cable. That cable will run through your dry suit, which, which could compromise the integrity of the suit and could add a leak point, which is something you really don't want in a dry suit. If you pick up a heated undersuit that has an internal battery, of course you have no risk of causing a leak in your dry suit. But if you have a leak somewhere else, you really need to think about seawater coming into contact with the battery which I think we can all agree is not a good thing. Now some heated undersuits work due to chemical reactions, but these can be hazardous. This type of system means you have little control over how warm it gets and once it starts, you can't really stop it. These suits haven't been designed for scuba divers and they haven't been tested at pressure either, so best avoided. The real con to heated undersuits though, lies in your decompression. As with most chemical reactions, the warmer things are, the faster the reaction. The same occurs with the decompression. If you're cold, then you'll absorb gases slower while you're at depth and decompress at slower rates when you come back up. These rates both increase when you warm up, so artificially changing your temperature at different times of the dive without telling your dive computer. This can seriously affect your decompression profile. So while your dive computer says everything is fine, what's going on in your body may be a different story. So imagine a dive where your suit is powered and you're nice and warm for the first half of the dive, but the battery runs out or the suit malfunctions on the way back up. 
You've been absorbing more gas than your computer is expecting because you're nice and warm. Only now you're getting colder so you can't get rid of it as fast as you need to. You now have an excess of absorbed gas in your tissues but your computer is telling you it's okay to ascend. There is serious debate online over whether the benefits of heated suits outweigh the potential problems and while they definitely have their benefits, they also have their problems. So yeah, if you feel the cold in colder waters, definitely look at heated undersuits. Just make sure that they are right for you and that you have complete control over the heated device and that you understand the effects it has on your decompression. If you want a more in-depth view of this subject, just click on the link pinned in the comments. So do you own a heated dry suit? If so, does it work for you? Let us know in the comments. So yeah, thank you for watching the first episode of The Deep Dive. If you enjoyed today's episode, then why not give it a like, share it with your diving buddies, and why not subscribe to our channel? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Deep Dive. But all of these tires. old car tires, what are we gonna do with them? Oh, we don't have many fish stocks left. Mm. Let's try and create some artificial roofs out of these old car tires. Yeah. And, um, Funny enough, it didn't work. Didn't work well? Uh, no, not particularly. Um, but now, of course, the, um, the sort of local governments and all that kind of stuff are basically saying, right, 